apologize for any wind, but we've made it to our next stop. It is the Earth Moving Legacy Center Museum. There is Caterpillar equipment everywhere. Very excited to see this one, boys and girls. Got a gorgeous 60 here. I don't know if they'll let me record inside. If they do, I will be sure to bring you guys along. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very concerned that Charles and I are going to be at this museum for a while. <laughs> as soon as you walk in, we've got teams of horses pulling the old horse-drawn graders, things like that. There is just tons and tons of vintage rustic iron here. If you do nothing else, get over here and come see this collection. I've just walked in and I am already blown away. With that being said, I think we're going to start on the right side and work our way around. Like I said in the previous video, I'm not going to show you guys everything, but I can already tell this is going to be mind-blowing. Let's get started. Right off the bat, we have the huge Holt 1838. That's just the machine number, I believe. That's not when it was manufactured. Wow. Talk about a beast. And I love that they have it setting in its element. It is literally setting on a dirt pile. It's all steel construction holding it in. This is fantastic. I look here at the plaque. 60 horsepower. And 1911 to 1916. There's a best smaller one there. We'll look at him and then we will wrap up once we walk all the way around the lower level. What a gorgeous little crawler. Love the radiator. I would certainly assume it is in original condition. The best 25 year produced 1918 to 1920. Wow. Little teaser of the Holt. As we head back over this direction, we've got some military units to look at. This is incredible, guys. You guys got to get over here. We have an enormous Holt 45. Gigantic belt pulley with the big snap-in clutch. was made 1915 to 1921, 45 horsepower. And this sucker is huge. I just keep backing up to get it in frame. This is incredible, guys. Undercarriage looks to be pretty good. Wow. So much to look at. <laughs> I really don't want to spend too much time just looking at every single piece, but it's just incredible. Big old wheel, has a big foot pedal brake. That would make quite a man out of you, running this thing all day long. It is a caterpillar. Wow. That is incredible. Let's move on and look at the military rigs. We're looking now at the Holt 5-ton. 1917 to 18. Has a swiveling pinnel hitch. Just an incredible machine, guys. There's 
so much to see here. We have the five ton as well. 17 to 18. It's got the big brass lanterns on it. It's even got some pioneer tools on the top. Incredible. Let's sneak behind it. To the big brother. The Holt 10 ton. Made from 1917 to 1925. It's got the big T bar tillers. <laughs> Incredible machines. Massive drawbar on it. Big old belt pulley. Fantastic. We're moving on to the best 60 horsepower. This is a 35 horsepower. It's a best 30. Original purchase price $3,400. 1921 to 1925. Fantastic. Wow. I always loved when they had the extremely large canopy on them. Looks like this one was made out of a modern grain bin. The ribbing would suggest that. This is a best 60. 65 horsepower 1919-1925 Wondering if these are snow cleats or not. I don't know if that was a thing back then, or maybe that's just what they came up with. Really don't know too much about this old iron. But I'm just bringing you guys along. Looking at another 60. Someone did a really bang-up job on this one. That is just a fantastic restoration. Just perfect in every way. Oak up top. It's got the fold-down covers on each side of the canopy. That is fantastic. 1919 to 1925, 65 horsepower. I mean, this thing just glistens. Wow. Here we have a smaller unit, smaller belt pulley, of course. Has a wooden cab on it. Large fuel tank. This camera always makes the reds come out pink, but I assure you those are a beautiful red. Wow. So much more to see, guys. I think we better start right back here. I think this museum is so massive, I'm going to have to start quote unquote picking up the pace. So. I will probably start moving a little bit faster. We have a Holt T35. This is just a gorgeous little unit. It's got the tub seat. 
and then we have a Holt 5 ton stashed in the back. It's got the T bar tiller. I like that. No carrier roller. Moving right on to the Holt 10 ton. Fantastic machine. Just pan across. Has a Caterpillar land leveler. Holt manufacturing. Big old wheels on there. I don't think the phone's going to do this stuff justice, guys. I'm probably eye level with the middle of that fuel tank. And it just keeps going. We're going to tuck right around this I beam and walk through the gray caterpillars. Wow, you guys have got to get out here. Ricky Tick, I'm serious guys, I am totally geeking out right now. We may as well get started with this gorgeous little Caterpillar 15. Sitting there on wood, resting. <laughs> A lot of respect. This would be, oh this is interesting, this is a narrow gauge. And then here we have what I assume would be the wide gauge. The track width seems to be the same. That's interesting. Gorgeous little machine. Moving right on ahead, we have a 20 narrow gauge. If you haven't already, guys, hit the thumbs up, subscribe for more. I know Charles and I are really enjoying ourselves going to these museums, taking it all in, taking some time off from the main shop. We have another 20 wide gauge. Then we also have some road graders, but I'm not going to show you those just yet. I think we have some kind of auto patrol. Yeah, there it says it. Auto Patrol number three. I learned about those on Squatch 253's channel. We have a 30. Big honking machine. Again, with the big swept canopy. Absolutely love that. Kind of guessing this is a wide gauge, narrow gauge setup all the way through. Kind of showing the two different variations. Wow. Then we go to the little two ton. This is just fantastic, guys. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera or not, but I am just smiling the whole way through this this tour. This is just incredible. Nose profile of the little two ton. I think this would maybe be comparable to a D2. Let me know in the comments. I really don't know much about cat stuff. I'm no expert on anything on my channel. I just muddle my way through and I bring you guys along on the adventures. And let me tell you, we are on an adventure today. These machines are so massive. We started right back there in the back corner with the 30. Now we move on to the 60. Gorgeous machine, still the T-Bar Tiller, 65 horsepower, original purchase price $41.75. I would write a check for that right now. Made in 1925 to 1931 in Peoria, Illinois. That's interesting. Some of them were made in Peoria. That's not just too far from us. That's incredible. This 60 is hooked to this enormous tub scraper. Wow.
another 60, the wooden cab. Wow, another 60, open station, but it has the large canopy. Apologize, we're getting some sun glare peeking through. Walk around this 60, and then I will look at the graders. I've never seen so much beautifully restored vintage iron in one place. Wow. Let's go check back over here, and then we'll continue the tour. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I am not an expert on these things, but here we have a number 20 motor patrol, 28 horsepower, 1928 to 31. We'll walk it, and then I'll show you the auto patrol, which is to the side of it. Like I said, I learned about these on Squatch's channel. But this is just, just too cool. We have some badges here. Wow. And then there's a little bitty 20 tucked inside of here. I've never even seen one of these before. I didn't even know this was a was a thing. We signed in at the front desk and then they asked for a donation to help keep the lights on and stuff, which Charles and I were happy to give. And I asked if we could take pictures and videos and the lady said, yeah, go right ahead, knock yourself out. So this is incredible. Wow. Let's walk around this other side of the motor patrol and then we will do the auto patrol. It's really cool to also see this stuff in person to have the scale you can watch it on YouTube all day long, but to come and see it in person is a totally different experience, guys. I cannot push you enough to come on out here and see this. This is fantastic. Let's move on to the Auto Patrol. Auto Patrol number 9, 36 horsepower. 1931 to 32 manufacturer location Minneapolis Minnesota 577 produced wow this is fantastic this one appears to be missing the wood Look up here at the operator's platform. And there's a lot of levers there to get a hold of. <laughs> One even through the steering wheel. I know if you do that on my old Minneapolis Moline, you might not get your arm back if you hit a rock. Put your arm through the steering wheel. It's got that Caterpillar emblem on the back has a locked toolbox, I'm assuming. This is incredible, guys. I am just all smiles at this point. If I don't see another machine all the way through the trip, I, I will be fine. I am, I just can't explain it, guys. This is fantastic. That wraps up the auto patrol. We've got another one to look at right behind me. We have the nose profile of the cutest little Caterpillar 10. It was made in 1928-32, Peoria, Illinois, $1,125. That is cool. I love the huge bulbous headlights. 
mean, they're just enormous in comparison. And it has this gorgeous little grater behind it. A look at the operator's platform. I really liked the, the bulbed tillers as well. This is incredible, guys. Steel wheels. Polished up brass tags, still intact. Wow. We have another tin here. Looks to be a narrow gauge. Little tin without headlights. Wow. We have another little tin. Like I said, I don't know much about them, but it's like this is like a high crop version almost. Oh, a tin high crop, okay. I kind of thought that uh, a high crop would be specific to tractors, but I guess the crawlers had them too. It's pretty incredible. Fairly low slung drawbar comparatively, but you had to do what you had to do. I just can't believe the condition of all these, wow. We're about to round the corner and work our way back, and then I believe there's an entire another building to look at, and there's equipment outside. Like, there's another 15 right there parked behind that gentleman's car. Again, with the bulbous headlights. Let's move on to the yellow stuff. I do love me some yellow. Cute little caterpillar tin in yellow. Won't stay too long because of the sun glare. We have a 22, which again I think is reminiscent of the D2. I could be mistaken on that. This one should be an orchard model with these huge fenders on it. Got the leather strap holding the crank up. This one might be electric start as well. Just the lines on the thing. Big old brass tags all polished up. The low slung rear seat for orchard work. Just the curves. I mean, there's, there's nothing new that compares to these machines. Even without the orchard fenders, they're still just curvy and gorgeous. Oh my goodness, guys. Let's get started right over here. Right here we have a T2 Traxcavator. Serial number 1395. Doesn't really say year produced. Guessing this was like a add-on kit later on. I don't know that this was a Caterpillar factory option. Definitely got the job done. Quite interesting. Dumping into a large center dump. Those chains. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. I think what I'm going to do is skip the graders and walk down the left side of this till we get up to the Holtz, I believe they were, and then we will come right back down here to the end and hit the number seven auto patrol. Right here we have a RD4. Very interesting. 36 horsepower. 1936 to 39 made in Peoria, Illinois. Again not far from us. Looks like it has a pony motor. Perhaps this one is original. Looks fairly clean. All 
although it would be hard for me to imagine the undercarriage being that clean and pristine, but it could be. I don't know. There's the big cinder block style injection pump like Squatch talks about, and this is incredible to see these up close and in person. Wow. This is so cool, guys. Okay, they have this hooked. So the Traxcavator is loading it, and then the RD4 is supposed to pull it away. <laughs> That's incredible. Wow. Even down to like the wall hanging memorabilia stuff. It's like an old sales brochure. Just cool. Just cool to see. Let's keep going. We have a 60 diesel conversion, 73 horsepower. Very interesting. 1925 to 1931 has a Caterpillar diesel in it. These must keep it from digging, I'm guessing, into the concrete. This is an all concrete floor. I don't know if those are factory. Did they serve some kind of purpose? I have no idea. Comment below if you know. A spectacular looking Caterpillar 65. This is one I have never heard of. Didn't know it was a thing. It has a side tank. Just the paint on these is incredible. It's a 65 gas. 73 horsepower. 1932 to 33. Peoria, Illinois. 521 made. Wow. This is just incredible. Enormous fuel tank. That's got to be a 55 gallon barrel, maybe 70 gallon. It's got to be. Look at that. Wow. right on the wall behind each one it talks about the two machines side by side we're gonna look at the diesel next wow just even here under the hood it's just it's just all beauty there's nothing out of place nothing ugly the headlights look small on this one by comparison being a 65. This is a 65 diesel, which according to the chart behind them is extremely rare. 155 produced, 31 to 32. It doesn't have any hood on it. I find that a little interesting. Got chrome handles or chrome on all the tillers, chrome stack. I'm just in awe at this point. Pony motor is enormous. It's a runner, it's starting to cook the paint. That's perfectly all right. Gorgeous embossed stop run throttle, I assume. Wow. Big swept fenders right here. Fantastic. Question for you guys Was this chain? original on these or was that something that operators added to pull the pin from the seat without getting off curious I, I genuinely do not know 
both of the 65s have it. Now we can look at the 70, which just from me looking at it, I would say is comparable to like a D8, I think. Wow. Let's go up front and check out the plaque. Really have to start backing up to get these girls in frame. This is a Caterpillar 70. Check our plaque. 77 horsepower, 1933 to 37, 266 made from Peoria. Just keep backing up to get you guys focused on it. <laughs> the scale of these things is incredible. Got the big old tow hook underneath in case you ever got the girl stuck. I guess you would have something nice and meaty to pull on. Gorgeous. I wonder how they set these things in here. I mean, there's not there's not even a mark on the cement. They must have carried them in or set them with a crane and then built the building around them. I don't know. Have this massive fluted exhaust manifold, huge jugs. Wow. Seventy diesel, there was fifty one made. Seventy gas, there was two sixty six. Drawbar is used but not very much. You can see it's worn smooth. That is incredible. Here we're starting to get into that like swept dash if you will. I know that's indicative of the later machines. I think I've seen those on some D8s, I think. Maybe D6s. I'm sure they'll be in here to show us. Probably right next door. And if I had to guess that, oh, this is very interesting, the Diesel 70, of which there was only 51 made, is coming summer of 22. So that's going to really round out this gentleman's collection. With only 51 of those being made in Diesel, that has got to be a rare bird. Seventy five looks to be original, if I had to guess. It's had some work done. Eighty three horsepower, thirty three to thirty five, Peoria, Illinois, thousand eighty seven of them made. Massive old six cylinder. You know this thing would shake the ground when you roll past. Guessing this is our injection pump. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We're getting close to the end, guys. I promise. <laughs> we have an RD8. Ninety-eight to a hundred and thirteen horsepower. Interesting. And 35 to 41, 15,000 of these made. I'm guessing, this being an RD8, that this is equivalent to a D8 dozer. That's my guess. Hopefully you guys aren't too hard on me in the comments. Again, I'm not an expert on these things. I just enjoy looking at the old vintage iron and bringing you guys along. Gorgeous American flag there. Look at the other one real quick. My cheeks are literally hurting from smiling so much, guys. Are these what they talk about 
these I've also learned over on Squatch's channel. They call these snow reliefs. And are these the snow or ice grousers? Like this one has a bump here, and this one has a bump here with a little notch cut into it. I would think that would break and grip in ice a whole lot better than a solid steel bar. Wow. We have some rare ones to look at over here. An overhead cable blader. Before we do that, I think I'll walk right back down and go through the auto patrols. Number seven, auto patrol. Starting back where I said I would. Awesome to see. Beautiful machine. 32 to 33. Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Peoria, Illinois, 125 made, 36 horsepower. Wow. Let's see the power plant on it. Looks like a little gasser. And unfortunately, this one's manifold is given out. I'd say water got in there. That's unfortunate. I'm sure it sat outside at some point in its life, but... It has its reverent little spot here. Wow. That's just too bad about the manifold. But at least it's inside being taken care of. Brass tags yet again. Serial number. 6D47, I believe. You guys might be able to see better in the video. The Auto Patrol, the wooden cab, all redone. This is a number 10, pardon the I-beam. Wow. 33 to 34, 40 horsepower. They've got the hood flaps down on this one. Number 10, Auto Patrol. They do have a charm about them. I will give them that. That's gorgeous. Even down to the front wheels. I think now we are getting away from the Auto Patrol line. I could be mistaken. We're starting to move into the tandem back wheels instead of the dual back wheels. This is... nope, I was mistaken. This is a Auto Patrol number 10. 40 horsepower. It is 33 to 34. Very interesting. Very, very interesting to see. This one's tucked behind the I-beam. Starting to move into our steel cabs, tandem rear wheels. Let me click you off, get around the I-beam, and we'll bring you right back. This is the 212 motor grader. I think now we are away from the auto patrols. 212 motor grader, 50 horsepower, 47 through 58, made in Peoria. We have an original one, new rubber on the front. Number 12. We're just going up in size now, guys. Pardon the I-beam. Number 12 diesel. Wow. I think this is the entrance to the other building, but we're not done in this one just yet. You guys have got to get out here. Big old Caterpillar diesel in the back. Almost looks like a power unit. Like if you were to unbolt that, you would just have a power unit you could put on sleds there. Brand spanking new glass in that as well. Wow. I think we're going to jump through this larger equipment, start down on the smaller stuff, check out the Holt stuff, and then we will come right back through. 
We are at the very front left side of the museum. We're just going to dive in, guys. There's so much to cover here. I could not do an in-depth walk around of each one of them. We have a D5, 45 horsepower, year produced 1939 only. That is very interesting to me. And 46 produced. It's an overhead cable blader. The paint is immaculate. Looks like we're waiting for cutting edges. They might be having those made. Didn't know they made a D5. I'm sure a lot of these are rare, but I don't know enough about them to talk about that. I just enjoy looking at them. Has a Heister D4. I'm curious if that would mean this would go on a D4. What does that, that Heister, I believe, is a completely separate company, I think. This has like a um, ratcheting, clicking bypass, like a lockout. That's very interesting. You would pull that, turn it, and then that would allow this to freewheel, I assume. Probably when you are working it or something, and then to raise it up and lock it, you would turn that, I guess. Cable drum does not look too bad. I can see why guys want the Caterpillar yellow. It's just, just fantastic. That's the Caterpillar D5. Caterpillar R3. 30 horsepower. 34 to 35, 59 produced. Interesting. I like the two tone variation there. Clean, perfect undercarriage, and then you've got the tracks. I like that. Looks good. Tank inside of a tank, it looks like. drawbar getting kind of thin but still usable Norm Wilson wow toolbox fantastic go right up front again we have a 22 high crop. This has got to be rare, as far as I would know. Kind of an offset grouser. That's interesting to me. Hmm. I'd say they just like cut that, judging by those two side mounting holes. Fantastic to see. Look at the operator platform. Again, those bulbous tillers. I like that kind of stuff. It's just those little quirky intricacies of each machine. Belt drive. Moving on to the RD7. Sixty nine horsepower, thirty five to forty, seventy two hundred and fifty four produced. So this must have been a very popular model. And it is hooked to, I assume, an enormous ripper that would have been cable drive. It's got the double knuckle there. And then you would have hooked up your auxiliary cable run it through all these reductions and then you would have lifted this thing which is just enormous I think it's solid maybe not solid but it's 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 heavy guys this is 15 inch here heavy welding 
multi pass. Wow. Big steel wheels. It's fantastic. I have no idea what this thing is. It's a caterpillar something or another. Let's call it that. Loading right into this dump trailer of sorts. Looks like it could be a side delivery dump, perhaps. We'll go around the front and see if there's a data tag. But there is a Caterpillar motor stuck out the back of it and a huge ship's wheel. Let's go around the front, see what we can find. To get to the front, we have to start at this beautiful RD8. Check its plaque. 98 to 113 horse, 35 to 41, 15,000 produced. I really love the small and concise plaques. We're getting big now. This is just enormous. I would assume this might even answer my question, that this is a D8. It says RD8 on the front, and then over the years, as people had used them, they just said, go get the D8 cat. And so the newer decals were starting to sneak their way on this one, instead of the RD8. And then there, I was talking earlier about that swept dash or hood. I've seen that on other machines. Wow. This is this enormous dump trailer. Not sure if it's a center dump or side delivery dump. Both sides flop down, as far as I can tell. Forge track trailer. Wow. Kind of looks reminiscent of a modern grain cart. Not a lot has changed. Obviously we're on rubber now. Then we have this enormous pull type loader hooked to what I assume is another D8. We'll have to check up front on the plaque. I'm going to step over this. It's like it would pick up a trench, perhaps. Perhaps a trench loader. With this large disc kicking the dirt in? Not sure. Comment below if you guys know. Let's go check out the front of what I assume is a D8. I was correct. It is a D8. 130 horsepower. $6,950 to buy it new. 23,000 of them made. Peoria, Illinois. 1945 to 53. It's a diesel fuel filters there, I think. We have a huge toolbox, I assume, of Caterpillar tools. Special tools. I'm fairly certain, guys, this is a brand spanking new museum. If you haven't been here yet, you guys really, really need to get here. I'm starting to go hoarse from talking so much. This will conclude the main ground floor. Let's go right through these doors and see what else we can find. Walking through the hallway here, we have a huge Caterpillar power unit still on the sleds. Looks like it may be hooked to a generator. If you've enjoyed the video this far, like, share, and subscribe. I know I'm enjoying myself. I hope you are as well. Caterpillar D318. Like I said, I think this is just a power unit. Have the gauges there. All just done up perfectly. Three phase brush motor, I assume. 
Normally behind these covers here was a brush. Now we're heading right on through the hallway. We're moving into some big caterpillar stuff. <laughs> shiny, shiny. Very gorgeously done. It's on wheels, has four coals. This thing's taller than I am. Wow. I'm guessing this is a modern power unit, if I had to guess. Quite a bit has changed from that to this. Moving into a garage type building now. Let's go see what we can find. Walking in now. It's just gorgeous iron everywhere, guys. This is just fantastic. I don't think these have plaques. So I think I'll just start walking. You guys watching this will probably know more about them than I do anyway. Got a D2 here with a front hydraulic unit. Low profile. It's got the low rear slung seat. Another D2, the blade on it, and another D2, crawler tractor. Fantastic. I can see that they're smaller on this side, so let's go on this side, then we'll hit that side up. Looking at the gorgeous, gorgeous D4. This one is cool to me, at least, because I'm watching, I think it's Pacific Northwest Hillbilly redo a D4 on his channel. I'm following along with him with great enthusiasm. This is a low-slung seat. Tracks might be the same width. I think they're about 16 inches. Wow. Cat D4. Let's keep going. I'm guessing another D4 with a cutting edge still on it. It's got the corner cutting edges. Yep, D4 narrow gauge. This may continue his collection of narrow gauge, wide gauge. It's awesome to see. Perhaps these are D5s. Nope, another D4. It's got the drip fan under there. Catching what oil, keeping care of the concrete. I love it. Oh, wow, this one has quite a ripper on the back, following both tracks. Wow. I'm going to have to get out of here, guys. I'm going to spend, I could spend a week here just looking at each machine, walking around them, noticing the little intricate details. Wow. Another D4. I love the two little eyes on top. Always liked that about caterpillars. I know in the history of Wildcat Willie, we did a little bit of our history with crawlers and dozers and things, and we had a little bitty D2. And it didn't have the eyebrow, the eyes, or I'm sorry, didn't have the headlights mounted up there, but it did have the brackets. Wow. This I also remember from the Pacific Northwest Hillbilly, uh, these swept tillers. His are like that. Now that I'm standing in person, it's the little things that you notice. Some kind of cultivator scarifier. Very interesting, very heavy duty. We are back to a D2. This one's winking at us, only has one eye. We were looking at the D2 with the single front headlight, and Charles noticed something very interesting. One, we have an extended breather to keep it out of the dust, and two, 
this unit is like a reversible unit. You would use this in the rear position. This has a swivel right here with a greasable joint. Or you could unhook this, swing it right out the front, and I assume hook to a blade. I've never seen anything like that before. That's pretty interesting. I don't know what they would have called that, but that's pretty cool, in my opinion. Wow. Let's move on. We've got more to see. Looking back at the D2 now with the single front headlight. It's got all the tin alongside the engine. Looks like it might have only been a drawbar tractor. There's those gorgeous spoked wheels. I would say reminiscent of my little 310G, but the D2 clearly came before my 310. These things built America right here. I also really always enjoyed this lettering here with the three bars on each side. Really, really enjoyed that. It's got the drawbar swinging. Interesting. And a heavy set of tillage discs behind it. Never seen one that heavy and that small before. We have a D4 narrow gauge. The gorgeous headlights with the mesh on them. Wow. It's got a heavy duty two bottom plow on the back. Gorgeous looking RD4. Very nicely done. We've even got an Alice Chalmers HD7 sneaking in. I know there's a lot of Alice guys out there. I never personally cared for them. They're good tractors and all. I just was a, always a Minneapolis and Case man. Let's take a look at the operator's platform. Looks like they're still working on it. Gauges everywhere. Wow. It's the HD7. Got a large tow hook as well. This one must have been a drawbar tractor. Quite an engine on it. Very interesting looking. Alice Chalmers HD7 diesel. We'll move right on. Apologize for the sunlight. We have a D4 with a canopy, some sweeps on it as well, and an enormous root rake. Gorgeous headlights, got the big radiator and hydraulic guard. Wow. Got a pipeline dozer here. The big side delivery crane. It's a D4. These are always fascinating in and of themselves. It's a completely, completely different subclass of dozer crawler. Has some interesting pieces right above where like the snow reliefs would be interesting what those are. Never seen anything like that. Have a diesel 35. Very interesting. Narrow gauge. Then we have a diesel 35 
wide gauge. I don't know if these are awaiting restoration or they're just going to leave them as they are. I just wanted to document it for you guys. A diesel 40. Spectacular. Looks like someone red primered the tracks, perhaps in hopes of painting it someday. Not sure. Another diesel 40. Just going up in scale. Nose profile of the 40. Yet again, a narrow gauge and then wide gauge. And a diesel 50. Wow. Looks like we've got some antifreeze leaking. No problem there. We also have a Cat N96 shovel. We're moving up in size. Has some form of street pad on it. Very interesting design. Interesting to me that they would want that to be narrowed out. I would think you would want that wide all the way across the face of the track pad or grouser. Air cleaner located there. And here's the bucket. Wow. Let's go look at the Holtz in the very front of the museum. I said we'd do those last. And then we have some stuff to look at right outside that door. We are back at the front looking at the Holtz side of the first exhibit you see. Yet again, they're on the dirt pile. Wow. This is number 2938. Apologize for the sun coming through. Probably should have shot this first. Wow. Again, the huge wooden corrugated can canopy. Let's see if we can get out of the sun. Read this plaque. This is the Holt 75, 75 horsepower. It's made 1916 to 24, San Laredo, California, and Peoria, Illinois. 1,577 of them made. And one of them survives today. Gorgeous big old steering wheel there. Huge brass spotlight. Just the intricacies, excuse me, of these. So this is a caterpillar. It's got the wavy font there. Wow. And then here we have the tiny little Holt T35. Crank start. Made 1921 to 24. 1,350 of them made. Wow. Charles and his boy are headed to the truck. I apologize if there's any wind, but I wanted to capture these sleeping giants outside before I left. And there's even more out back. I don't think I'm going to film that. Just wanted to do a walkthrough. We had a 20, a 30. We have another 30 right here. We have even more over here. They're all in various conditions.
this was a really, really fun trip. We had the entire museum, if you will, to ourselves. Gigantic 60. Another look at the 60 here. Just enormous. Another good looking 60. Side tank, but perhaps all of the 60s were side tanks. I don't know enough about them to comment. And just a couple more. Wow. It's just us and just literally just a couple more people at the Earth Moving Legacy Center. You guys have got to come and check this out. This was absolutely worth spending a day driving over and looking at it. We're going to go out back of the main offices and see what's out there. Going to sign you off and do the outro. I'd like to thank everyone for watching today as we looked at all these different unique pieces of history. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe as we go on these adventures together. Again, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.